Hey everybody, welcome back to the Manga Geekdom. Today we're doing another haul video for the month of June and the start of the summer manga haul season. This will be video one of three of all the cool stuff that I get in the summer. We got a lot of books to cover, so let's get started. Let's begin the haul with some Kodansha books. We got two releases here that I was looking forward to. The first one being Sugumi Project from Ipatu. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2023, or at least the first half of the year. Really excited to finally have this in my hands. I love this cover. I love the art and the premise. Basically, after a nuclear fallout, uh, Japan has become something else in the future, something mutated with uh, chimera-like monster hybrid uh, beasts, and the human characters are venturing in to retrieve a special uh, weapon item that they need. I mean, check that out. Super amazing, in my opinion. Really excited to have this. And the next one isn't as exciting for a lot of people. I know, I know. But it's one of my guilty pleasures. It is Rent a Girlfriend. Here is volume 19 of this series. Still trucking along. I'll say that much. <laughs> Silly story, I guess. So, yeah. Got these two books. Let's uh, take a look at the spine here. Looking pretty cool. Let's set that aside. Let's talk about some Yen Press books. First one that we're going to talk about here is Handyman Saito in Another World from Kazutomo Ichitomo. This is also one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and we follow uh, Saito. He has been isekai'd into another world, and he was a former handyman in our world, in Japan. So now that he's in this uh, fantasy world, he belongs to this uh, group here that go treasure hunting and doing uh, basic uh, fantasy stuff you see in like RPG games and other fantasy manga and anime. Now the cool thing about it is that these four have a really wholesome, nice relationship. They actually care about each other, watch each other's backs. There's no uh, backstabbing or controversy and stuff like that. I love the art on this. It's a little bit rugged. If you've seen the anime, uh, C2C did a beautiful job at it, but the original has its charm, as you can see here with the uh, sketchy artwork. At first, it's a little episodic in nature, but as you keep reading, you're going to find out more about the characters' backstories, the beautiful friendship that forms, why that is. All the background characters, if you will, they all have a role to play in the story uh, by the end of it. So yes, this is super exciting to have. Volume 1, can't wait for Volume 2 to uh, collect the series. And I got a book that has been on everybody's list as one of the best comedy slash fantasy books and all that stuff. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's because of space issues. I know it's ongoing at the moment, but I decided to uh, finally pick up Delicious in Dungeon. So here's volume one of the series. I have never read this. I'm looking forward to it. I think I'll like it because of the fantasy setting. So yeah, I went ahead and started with the first two volumes right here. I do like the art on this and I am excited uh, for the anime adaptation. So I wanted to start reading the series before then. Take a look at the spines real quick for these Yen Press titles once again. Let's do, uh, let's move on to Viz Media. Last haul video, I showed you Pokemon Adventures Black and White. Here is Volume 3. I do have Volume 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9 on the way. Volume 8's missing, but I'll get that soon. Uh, but yeah, I went ahead and picked up all of Black and White, but the only one I got here to show you is uh, Volume 3. It's so nostalgic, because I remember when I first played... Uh, black and white back in the day. So it's nice to go back to this and relive those memories of that game. And of course, with the new story, this is actually my first time reading the black and white uh, manga adaptation. Set that aside. Here we have Ayashimon volume two from Yuji Kaku. One more volume to go. That is a little out of focus. There we go. One more book to go and we'll have the full series. 
Next up is Call of the Night, Volume 12. I have been working on a video for this series. It should come out soon. It's just things have been happening <laughs> that have delayed a lot of things on the channel. But I am working on uh, a little bit more of a deep dive on Call of the Night and Kotoyama. So, yeah. Excited to talk about this vampire manga. I'm not typically a vampire fan, but this was the exception. I really took a liking to this series, the characters, the amazing artwork. I love this series so much. So, yeah. More of this, please. Can't wait for uh, Volume 13. This is getting an anime soon. It is Frieren Beyond Journey's End. Here we have Volume 8. The anime should debut, I think it's later this year or early next year, one of the two. And it should cover the first six volumes. But yeah, I'm excited to get Volume 8. I'm going to read through this and go back. I made a first impressions video when Volume 1 came out. It's been a long time, so I want to come back to this and uh, do another deep dive on Frieren and how good it is. But yeah, let me show you some of the art here. Looking pretty awesome, if you ask me. We got Insomniacs After School, Volume 2. I talked about Volume 1 in a reading vlog that I did. The anime I really enjoyed, so I will happily continue collecting the manga and enjoying the story that way. But yeah, here's some of that great art lovely character designs and here is the beast complex volume three i don't know if this is supposed to be the last of the beast complex series but it's cool you know after finishing beast stars it's awesome to have a little bit more of this world and the lovely characters so let's take a look at the spines of all these books together love how different everything looks but they all look super nice. let's do seven c's we got The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes, Ultramarine, Volume 4, The Finale. I haven't read it yet. I'm excited. Can't wait to read through it and make a full video on it. I've been waiting ever since I read Volume 1 to talk about this wonderful little series. You can get a feel for uh, the beautiful uh, character designs for the series. Another one over here is Yakuza Reincarnation, Volume 6. A wonderful isekai story with great artwork and action. Take a look at this. I love talking about this series because of the great character work here uh, done by um, uh, Hiroki Miyashita. Forgot the name for a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> look at that. It's pretty awesome. And this next batch of books, I watched the show immediately fell in love with it and after i was i think it was one or two episodes away from finishing the first season i said you know what i'm gonna collect this series and that is the dangers in my heart here is volume one i got all of it that's available from seven seas volume two here's volume three volume four and the cover here for volume five volume six is coming up in July, so I got that pre-ordered. I uh, can't wait to uh, add this to uh, the collection. So if you don't know what The Dangers in My Heart is, we follow these two characters right here, Ichikawa and Yamada. And Ichikawa is an antisocial boy in class, and he unfortunately has some uh, really disturbing thoughts about his friends. And that's all because of feeling that he hasn't been seen by his friends and peers or heard by others. So that frustration sort of developed into this uh, macabre obsession of thinking the worst of people in his classroom. But he doesn't feel seen until uh, he meets in the school library this young lady, Yamada, over here. She is the idol of the class, but she's also a model and actress outside of school. But she also has a couple issues of her own. She's not the cliched popular girl that you might think, even though she is pretty popular. She just wants to hang out with friends and enjoy uh, an obscene amount of sweets, which goes against her profession, obviously. So that leads to a lot of laughs within the story. The two have a chance encounter in the library and slowly uh, become friends. And Yamada influences Ichikawa 
to sort of change his ways and he starts to become a much better person as a result. The art is a little funky at first, but uh, you quickly get used to the character models. Obviously, later on in the story, they're much more refined uh, to what people expect, as you can see here. It's progressed a little bit different here from volume one. You can sort of see Yamada's uh, face has changed since volume one. So that's, a, that's pretty cool. I like the quirky aspect of this pair and I love the art and the story is pretty uh, wholesome and nice. So yeah, I was happy to pick up the dangers in my heart. But, they're all the spines together. We got a couple big releases here from Seven Seas. First one we're gonna take a look at is Don't Call It Mystery Volume uh, 1 and 2, I guess, uh, the first omnibus edition. Story and art by Yumi Tamura, one of the more uh, famous mangaka in the realm of uh, Jose and Shoujo manga. This mystery detective series is pretty renowned, has live action adaptations, and just beautiful artwork. I've heard this is a dense read, so I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, I will be covering this in a future video. Pretty exciting to finally get this book and talk about such a famous and beloved series. Another one over here, oversized edition, is Marmalade Boy, Collector's Edition Volume 2. I need to make a video on this as well, but I want to read all of it because I've seen the anime for this, but I don't don't remember much, I have to be honest. So I would like to read the story in its entirety and uh, do a little deep dive on Marmalade Boy. But you can see some of the art here. It does have the colored pages, which is always great. Look at that. And the last one here is Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko Deluxe Edition Volume 2. Did not have a problem getting this compared to Volume 1, where I had to wait at least seven months i think six months to to get the uh the first book uh, this i got right away and it shipped all that cool stuff so yeah here's some of that art looking really gorgeous and this spine let's take a look at everything here together love me some big releases for manga oversized editions yes please i got two more releases and i totally forgot to highlight this when I was talking about the Viz books, this is a book that I have been wanting for years and I totally forgot to get it. I just kept forgetting about it and placing it on my to buy list and never getting to it. I wanted to get this manga adaptation of The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past by Shotaro Ishinomori, a famous creator from things like Cyborg 009. So yeah, super happy to have this. Reads like a Western comic, which I don't care. I just, I'm just happy to have this. I love the artwork on this. And this is one of my favorite Zelda manga adaptations. Looking phenomenal. And I got it for cheap, too. This is, what is this, cover price of 20 bucks. I think I got this for less than $10 on Amazon, I think. Last but not least, we got something special here. You probably saw it in the thumbnail. It is the new reprint of Old Boy. This is from Distrito Manga. This is the Spanish release. I speak two languages, so I have no problem in getting this. I saw this at Walmart of all places. And the funny thing about it is that I was criticizing them because all I see are Viz books like Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, and uh, My Hero Academia, stuff like that truckloads of those books and I was getting pretty bored and tired and then one day they just magically restocked and added things from other companies and this happened to be there and thought oh did they get a reprint of volume one in English let's go I looked at it I'm like wait a minute this is different it's a hardcover it's a three-in-one and it's in Spanish okay but I got it either way it's only gonna be three releases to collect the whole thing which is pretty awesome Here's the back of the book. And just in time, right? Because the movie's getting a re-release, the uh, remastered edition or something like that. But yeah, here is Old Boy, volume one of this edition, which would be 
uh, the first three volumes of the original release. But this is pretty cool. I've been wanting to have Old Boy in my collection for a long time, but I wasn't up for hunting the volumes online because they're out of print and sometimes they go for a bunch of money. It's roughly the size, just a little bit bigger than a Deluxe uh, Seven Seas release just because of the uh, hardcover uh, binding makes it a little bit taller. And you can take a look here at the binding of the book. So if you can read Spanish and you don't mind uh, forking over uh, a little bit more money from your standard release, I do recommend getting uh, this Spanish edition uh, for Old Boy. Again, by Distrito Manga, which would translate to uh, Manga District in English. So that's going to be it. That's the haul for now. I do have some anime releases that I do want to show, but I'm going to save them for a later video when we do the July haul because it's only, I think I got like three releases here, but I do have a bunch more that are coming in the mail and it's a bunch of discotheque releases and some other stuff that's uh, a little bit older on DVD that long went out of print, but I was able to acquire. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about that stuff. We'll save that for another time. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are the best. Thank you for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. If you want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button, share the video, all that stuff. You know what to do. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.